Hello, my name is Dr. Sana Khan and I'm going to talk on the topic blood from the topic circulatory system. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so our body is made up of cells, tissues, organ and organ system, right? These cells, tissues, organs and organ system require certain products so that they can function to the optimum level, right? So let us see what are these products. These are products are oxygen, nutrients. Oxygen and nutrients are required by each and every cell of our body. But there are certain products also which are formed inside the cell and they have to be eliminated. And those are waste products and carbon dioxide. So these transportation is carried out by a fluid which is present in our body and that is called as blood. So we call blood as a main circulating fluid. Why? Because it transports the various substances in our body. But the blood needs an organ so that it can be pumped in the entire body and that pumping organ in our body is called as heart. So heart is called as a pumping organ which helps the blood to reach to each and every part of our body. But it also requires certain tubes so that it can reach to each and every minute spaces of our body and those tubes are called as blood vessels. So our body requires three important things so that the blood can perform its function to the optimum level. The first is obviously the blood. The second is heart, which can pump it to the various parts. And the third is blood vessels, which can act as a medium so that it can reach to each and every part. So we say that blood, heart and blood vessels, they together make a system which is called as circulatory system. So in today's video, we are going to talk only about blood. Okay, so blood is called as a fluid connective tissue and as a main important carrier of our body because it transports the various substances in our body. Now, you must have all seen the blood. You might have got a cut at certain point. You must have seen the blood in your hand, right? At the site of the injury. What is the color of the blood? The color of the blood is bright red. Do you know anything apart from that? No? Okay. So let's understand what are the physical characteristics of blood. So the most, most important thing, it's a fluid connective tissue. Then bright red in color. pH is lightly alkaline. That is, it is 7.4. Whenever the pH is above 7, we call it as alkaline. When it is below 7, we call it as acidic. Oh, and when it is exactly at 7, we call it as neutral. So our blood falls into a category of slightly alkaline. So the pH of our blood is 7.4. And it is salty in taste and it is a viscous fluid. What does the word viscous mean? Viscous means it's slightly sticky fluid. It's neither a solid nor a liquid fluid. It is a fluid in which comes in between your solid and liquid, a semi-liquid kind of a fluid. And it's a little bit sticky because of the cells present in it. What is the amount of blood present in your body? The amount is around five liters. I would say more specific, 8% of your total body weight constitute the weight of your blood. Okay, so now as we know what are the physical characteristics of blood, let us go into more detail and understand about the composition of the blood. Now, what can you see it in the image? I can just see a test tube which is filled with a red color fluid, right? But I need to see what are the components of the blood. So I need to do certain things. What I need to do, I need to do is I have to put this test tube into a machine and I have to allow it to centrifuge so that I can get to see the components of the blood. So after centrifugation, what I can see is this test tube. Now, what does, what does this, this test tube consist of? This test tube consists of two important things. That is plasma and blood cells. So we say that blood consists of two important things. The first one is plasma and the second one is blood cells. Okay. So now let us understand about the each component of our blood. So let us talk about first, that is plasma. So plasma constitute around 90 to 92% of water and 8 to 10% of solute. So 90 to 92% of 
water is the main part of our blood and the remaining 8 to 10 percent is solute you know what does the solute contains it contains certain things like gases like nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide certain hormones certain nutrients like glucose amino acid and etc etc okay so plasma is what plasma is mainly water that is 90 to 92 percent of water and apart from plasma our blood consists of cells so 45 percent of our blood is cells and 55 percent is plasma okay so now cells are of three types the first one is called as rbc that is erythrocyte the second one is called as wbcs that is leukocytes and the third one is called as platelet that is thrombocytes so which are the three cells present in our blood rbcs wbcs and platelets so let us understand the function of each cell so the first cell which is rbc so the full form of rbc is red blood cell so from the name we can clearly understand that this is the cell which is going to give red color to our blood now why it gives red color to the blood because it consists of a pigment which is called as hemoglobin so hemoglobin is a pigment which gives red color to our blood and it also helps in the transportation of oxygen as well as carbon dioxide so hemoglobin combines with oxygen can you see it in the image yes how the hemoglobin is attracting oxygen towards it so hemoglobin combines with oxygen forms oxyhemoglobin and this oxyhemoglobin get transported in our body okay so oxygen in our body get transported in the form of oxyhemoglobin so we say that rbcs helps in the transportation of various gases like your oxygen and a little bit amount of carbon dioxide coming to the next cell that is wbcs which are also called as leukocytes so these are pale white in color see these are the pale white color cells which are called as wbcs and they play a very very important role in immunity now what is this role immunity see whenever our body gets attacked by a pathogen our body shows a response right see whenever certain things happen we do respond to it the same way when pathogen goes into our body our body shows a response and that response is called as immune response and which is provided by a cells called as wbcs okay so wbcs tries to fight against that pathogen and maintains the immunity of our body okay now coming to the last cell that is thrombocytes so thrombocytes are these irregular shaped cells which are also called as platelets and they are very 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 important because they play a very important role in our body that is blood coagulation now let us understand what is blood coagulation you must have at some point or the other must have got hurt right whenever you get hurt or you get a cut in your hand what happens blood flows right but after a certain time it stops also why let us see that see whenever there is an injury the blood vessels get free and the blood starts flowing but within a few seconds the thrombocyte comes and stop the flow of the blood so what do they do they accumulate at the site of injury and they form a plug which is called as platelet plug what is it called platelet plug so that is why we say that thrombocyte are very very important and they play a very crucial role in defense mechanism why because it prevents excess loss of blood at the site of injury by forming a platelet plug okay so these are the three different cells rbcs wbcs and platelets so let us revise once again so blood is made up of two most important thing the first one is plasma which is around 55% and the second is blood cells which is around 45% okay so plasma constitute mainly of water that is 90 to 92% of plasma is water and the remaining are the solutes and blood cells are of three types erythrocytes leukocytes and thrombocytes okay so this is all about blood which i wanted to talk i hope you must have understood and you are going to give me a response very soon so thank you everybody thank you